Today I'm going to give you seven tips for beginning backpackers, but before we do, my name is Jason, this is Huck Outdoors. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications of new videos I got coming out. So let's get to those tips. Tip number one. Tip number one is going to be packing while you're relaxed. You don't want to get out there and wait till the last minute. I know I've done it before, many of my friends have, but you don't want to wait till the last minute and say you're hiking at like 5 a.m. in the morning, leaving on a trip, and you're still packing a tent the night before. Start packing the week before, maybe a few days before, but lay out all your gear, just go over it, and make sure you're just packing while you're relaxed. That way you don't forget anything or rush into anything. Tip number two. Tip number two is starting small. You don't have to do the John Muir Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, nothing like that on your first hike or your first couple hikes, you know? Do something small, do something that doesn't have a ton of mileage, a ton of killer elevation gain. It's gonna be a more enjoyable hike for you. You don't have to do a lot of big miles. Do what you feel comfortable doing and enjoy yourself. That's the main reason you're getting out there, right? Tip, tip number three. Tip number three is going to be pre being prepared to navigate. That's right, I said navigation here. And when you're out there in the back country, you could have your map, you could have a compass, you have a GPS on your phone or just like a Garmin. Just be prepared and know how to use them. Learn how to read a map, learn how to read a compass. You never know out there when, say, maybe your GPS is done, maybe the battery died or it fell off a cliff or something like that. Now you gotta learn how to use that map. Or maybe you can go to a local park and practice with the compass, practice with a little map, and get to learn the landmarks around. That way you can read a map of somewhere else and realize where those landmarks are. Tip number four is going with someone that has more experience backpacking than you. They might be able to set up a trip for you, set up the route, everything, but you want to be involved with that. The great thing about going with somebody more experienced than you is you're learning from them. So you want to go out there, talk to them, learn how they do a route, how they find their water sources, all that. But one of the best things you can do is going with somebody with more experience than you. We all have to start somewhere. Believe me, that person did as well. And they've got a wealth of knowledge that they can pass down to you. Tip number five. Tip number five is to check the weather before you get out there and pack for unexpected conditions. You never know when the weather is going to change, like say in the mountains or in the desert. Storms can come in really quickly. So check the weather. There's many different apps out there like weather.com, uh, Weather Underground. I like to use NOAA.gov. Uh, a few of my friends, they like to use Mountain Forecast. But check those weather reports before you go. Do a long range forecast if you're doing a longer trip. So check that out. You don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. For example, you don't want to be in a slot canyon with a storm that's coming down and bringing rain because you're going to be washed away. At the same point, you don't want to be out on the top of a mountain when a lightning storm's coming in either. So check the weather and then pack for the right conditions or unexpected conditions, I should say. Maybe bring that rain jacket just in case because you know it could also be used for wind. Or bring an extra top layer like a fleece or something like that just in case that weather just drops like 15, 20, 30 degrees. You're going to be nice and warm getting back to the car. Tip number six it might sound like common sense, but you want to know how to use your gear. A lot of people buy new gear and they go out and use it for the first time in the field. Don't be, don't be like that. You want to use your gear beforehand. Sit up in the park, maybe in your backyard, somewhere like that, and get to know your gear. Maybe practice setting up your brand new tent a couple times. Practice the pitches on there. You never know when a storm's coming through and you gotta set that tent up quick. You don't want to be there and like, oh my gosh, look at these instructions. How do I do this? You don't want to be that guy in the middle of a rainstorm, right? And same for water filters or any other type of gear. You never know, like, you could get a brand new water filter and it might not work or a brand new stove and say it's missing an o-ring and first time you use it you flip it on and all of a sudden flames are coming up from everywhere you want to use that gear before you get out there tip number seven tell someone where you're going and when you'll be back that can consist of the four w's who what when and where maybe just a simple email or a text to a couple friends or a family member or two that way they know what happens if you aren't back in time or say you get lost out there First off, who? Who is going on your trip? Is it just you, maybe a friend or two? Let them know who's going with you. What? What are you doing out there? Are you going on a backpacking trip? Are you doing a fishing slash backpacking trip? Maybe just a hiking trip? Are you going for three days? Are you going for five days, two days, one day? Let those people know what you're doing out there. When? When are you leaving? When are you coming back? Let your friends know that that way in your little trip report there that they know, hey, yeah, he's, he left Friday afternoon. He was supposed to be back Sunday evening. 
where are you going to? Just let them know the trailhead, maybe a simple itinerary of possible campsites you're gonna be at. Maybe like say if I was going on the South Fork Trail up to Dry Lake, I could let them know, yeah, I'm going up on the South Fork Trailhead to Dry Lake and be camping at the Dry Lake campsite. Maybe I couldn't camp at Dry Lake, I went to Lodgepole or something like that, or maybe even to Dollar Lake, but they'll, they'll know where to start at and that's a good starting point for them with search and rescue as well. I hope these seven tips were helpful for you. If they are, give them a like, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications of new videos I got coming out. And if you got any tips for beginning backpackers, leave them down below. So until the next one, thanks for having me.